Welcome back to a bonus, totally bonus video. I don't normally record, record these on Thursdays, but I'm going to today. And you're gonna get a bonus video out of it. So exciting. Maybe, maybe not so exciting, because they're all gonna upload at once. And so it's not like this one will come out earlier than anything else. Whatever, bonus video. Can I say bonus again? Bonus! How many bonus times can I bonus say bonus? And my bonus sentence is bonus. Bonus, bonus. Just, 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 just! Um, I'm trying to keep my energy up because I recorded like seven minutes of junk and I went, oh, that was terrible. And I dropped it. And I think I'm just trying to keep talking so that I hope something will come out and I'll say something. I want to talk about something frivolous, but I can't think of anything terribly frivolous. I get a lot of ads on Google and on YouTube that are targeted ads. Everyone gets targeted ads. But when I'm watching YouTube videos, I get a lot of ads for like cloud business solutions and Office 365 and QuickBooks and a lot of that kind of stuff is based on my search queries. And since I do tech support, I end up searching a lot for why is why is QuickBooks broken? Outlook is running really slow and, and stuff like that. And so I get a lot of like, I bet you want to be part of this, this sales solution, this CRM monstrosity that we're selling to everybody. Do it. And I, I don't want to be part of your CRM. I just want to know why this other person's is totally borked. So targeted ads, they're kind of funny. You probably see totally different ads. I wonder if they do content searching. Like if I keep talking economics, are we going to get lots of like, I don't know, ads for the Wall Street Journal? What do you get when you search economics questions a lot? Ooh. That, that, that blue arc in the back of the video there, that's, that's a stadium. I just... Seeing bits of the city behind me, it's kind of neat. I was thinking of a CenturyLink field. There is a field in Phoenix, Arizona, which the Diamondbacks play on, and I do not know what it is called anymore. I could look it up, but I don't care. Um, because to me, it's always going to be Bob. Since when it was built, it was the Bank One Ballpark. Bob. So it's always been Bob. And now, now it's some other bank owns it, and so it's not that anymore. It's like the Chase Field or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't really care. It's the Bob. In the same way, like they changed the name of the official name of the aquatic center at my university. It used to be the natatorium, which is the, the swimming place. It's basically Latin for the place where you go swimming. And then somebody donated a bunch of money, and so they named it after them. But. It's always going to be the natatorium to me, even though when I go back and call it that, no one will know what I mean, because it hasn't been that in 12 years, maybe. Maybe 10, 10 or 12 years since it's been the natatorium, but that's still what it is to me, and so that's what I'm always going to call it. a boatload of IR LEDs. I bet I bet I could just put them in here. I could try that. See if I can get the stuff together to do that tomorrow night for tomorrow's drive and see if I can illuminate my face in IR and then this camera have it pick up. Because that would be super cool. It would be low impact as far as the drivers around me but it would be 
significant to anybody watching. That'd be super great if that worked. I'm gonna give that a shot. You know, I can test that at home. I just go home, charge some batteries, and then power the thing on. See if that works. What? Might work. It might be super awesome. It wouldn't probably wouldn't be in very good color. The color might look washed out and strange. But it could very well work. I don't know. videos <laughs> not the best thing what kind of targeted ads are people seeing uh, when they when they watch these videos do you get ads probably maybe you sh maybe you do maybe you don't I'm not monetizing so I don't think I get like, if there are ads they're not impacting me too much I don't think I have no idea how the monetization policy on YouTube works. I haven't dug into it at all. Um, I know that it is not, from what little I can gather that people are allowed to talk about, it's not super creator-centric. Like, the, the monetization policy appears to be largely focused on how to turn the attention of viewers into probably money for Google's shareholders. Um, and I mean, Google has to pay uh, some pretty hefty bills all the time. Like, they have massive expenses. It's outlandish. And they don't really, like, the core of Google, or at least the the seed that started Google is not the sort of thing that you can really charge people for. Like, getting people to pay for a search service is not really a thing and never has been. So, advertising has always been the way to do that because then it's passive. The users are paying in attention span and you, you have investors basically pay for it. issue with that is then you, know, you have ads and there's a problem and everyone hates ads. Whatever. Oh shit. I just swerved into that guy's lane. I am so sorry guy. Gal, person, fellow that I almost took out right there. Yeesh. What am I doing? What the hell am I doing? Uh, uh, I just need to go to bed. People. Ugh. Ads. Um, they're a thing. People use them. So, like, Google has to pay for stuff, right? They have massive expenses. They pretty much rely on ad revenue for that. I guess I can go over economic profit. Yeah, but not right now. 
I might stop doing the the second half drive videos just because they don't you don't ever see anything which means that these will turn out really short and I suppose before I change my process up maybe I should just maybe I should actually post these so that people can watch them if anyone wants to watch them Maybe no one does. Maybe this will just be a journal, and that is fine. There is nothing wrong with a journal. I don't watch too many vloggers, so how many of them spend a lot of extra time talking to their cameras about their plans? Does it look weird that I keep looking down at the screen and not at the camera itself? Because the lens is not where the screen is and I'm too far away for the angle to be small. Oh, that was cool. Watching the lights change. You can't see. Watching the lights change is pretty cool. I wonder if that person behind me is like, what's he pointing at? What's he doing? Could he even see it? Huh? Maybe? Who knows? Do you think I'm Skyping with somebody? Doing video chat? Like Bouse? Video chat Bouse. Making weird faces on camera. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm just gonna end. Uh, this was a weird bonus video. I may or may not see you for the dark drive. I will talk at you in the next video. So have an excellent night. And I've come back for a second half of the bonus video. Now I'm driving around town singing about what I'm doing. That was, yeah, yeah, that happened. Okay, okay. Welcome back to the car and the road and the town and the vlog and the part where I say I have nothing to talk about. Yeah, I'm just gonna suck it up. I'm gonna make those public. Um, and then I think once I get to, there was one particular one a couple videos ago that I thought turned out really well. I was really pleased with how it had gone. I thought it was fun. Or at least I enjoyed recording it. And so when I get that one up, and I'm pretty sure I'll know which one it is because I'll, I'll hear it and I'll go, yeah, that was the good one. And then I'll post that one on Facebook. So I do really like role-playing games. I like paper-based games. I think they're loads of fun. It's very freeform and, and very, you know, imagination-based. Use your imagination. There's a hand gesture that goes with that, but my hands are a little tied up at the moment. And are occupied by the steering wheel. Oh. So that's fun. It's good times. Have a bunch of different rule books for different ways of doing it. I've really, my most of my experience is with the, I guess it's the open gaming, I think, the OGL type gaming, which um, and specifically the D&D style. And I got started in 3rd edition. And then I half updated to 3.5. And I've just 
really enjoyed them a lot. I never messed with four. I've never messed with five. I've heard fifth edition is really good. Like, there's a lot of great stuff in it. I just never messed with it. Uh, I also did not do anything with the earlier versions. I guess in keeping with the half-baked, under-informed, academic style of this channel, I could go over the the history of D&D, &D, as I see it. I could, but that doesn't really feel right right now. In the beginning, I'm going to do it anyway, there was... There was no D&D. In the beginning, there were no rules. Sometimes people told stories, and sometimes people worked together to tell stories. And then one day it came to be published that there were, there was a codified way to tell stories in a cooperative in the manner of a fantasy novel. And this, I believe, was Chainmail. Some of the rules that had been used by this particular group of collaborative storytellers to put some structure, some fairness, and a little bit of random luck into their stories were codified and published. Chainmail was, to the best of my understanding, I haven't studied it very heavily, very interpretive. It did not lay out lots of rules for lots of things, um, and it was very limited in what you could do. There were just a handful of things that these people had done, basically. And the broad history of Dungeons & Dragons is a balancing act between making sure that people can tell the stories that they want to tell and can be the people that they want to be, and in making sure that there are understandable, usable, and fair rules governing all the random happenstance that makes up life in a day-to-day -day world. As a third wrench to throw into the works, they also want to balance the gameplay aspect because as important as it is to make things fair and on some level realistic, you also want them to be fun to play, right? You don't want to make everything be super complicated, otherwise you just go out and do it. And obviously you can't. There, it turns out that there are not dragons you can go out and hunt with your grand magics. That's not a real thing that happens in the real world. Which is why these games exist, because that's a fun story to tell. So we tell that story. So the broad history of D&D has been a balancing act between adding rules to cover new situations and keeping the rules from blocking what you can and can't do. Because the goal is not just to be able to describe anything with rules, it's to be able to let people do anything and then let the rules kind of shake out whether or not that works. As I understand it, they have become less heavy table and rule based in later generations. So 4th edition and especially 5th edition are very interpretive. They are not quite so codified as say 3.0 was. 3rd edition was very codified, I felt and almost restrictively so, because there were rules for everything. So anything you tried to do, there were rules covering it. You didn't make anything up. Which meant that when you tried to do something that wasn't covered by a scenario in the rules, everything kind of got snarled. And you would spend a lot of time struggling to figure out how to make that fit. The major advantage that I see that the White Wolf system has is that it is extremely... I've been using the word interpretive, so I'm going to come up with a new one too. I'm going to use a different one now. It's very, very impressionistic as far as the rules go. It's not 
this action takes this role and requires these numbers. It's very much and explicitly, these skills basically cover this vague zone of endeavor, and so you roll your dice on those skills, and then how hard it is is determined by your storytelling. Just work it out between yourselves, and it's very, very much tell the story, and then when you have to, roll dice about it. Which might be why it lends itself... I, I feel like there's a much stronger White Wolf-based LARP community, though I could be entirely wrong. And maybe D&D LARP is a huge thing that I just don't know anything about. The other things, in other news... Meanwhile, back at the farm... What other games do I know? Like, I don't really know that many. Um, I've played some D20 modern stuff, and the class system is totally different from what D&D does, except for the part where it's exactly the same. Um, the sort of class breakdown by role is very different. But the leveling system is, is pretty much identical. The basic rule set's the same. Uh, I've looked at, though I lost my book for, the Serenity role-playing game, which I thought was kind of interesting as a weird fusion of some things. I might... yeah, that was kind of cool too, but I didn't really get into it. I never played the game. I just read the rule book a bunch. Um, that was fun. Well, it's been a rambly and weird bonus day, so I will talk to you next time, probably tomorrow, now that we're deep in the dark. Uh, have an excellent night.